Hi, this is Kevin Quigley, and welcome to Tarot Off the Cuff. Lily McNamara has been known as the healer with the hat. She works with tarot, with Reiki, past lives work, and other things. She loves working with adults, children, and animals, and in particular, she calls to herself people who have experienced some trauma in their lives so that she can help them empower themselves towards their own healing. Hi, everyone. I am Lily McNamara, and I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Thank you for joining us on Tarot Off the Cuff. I will be using, we're gonna rock it old school and use the Rider weight deck, but the pocket size. So we're gonna give it a quick shuffle. See what comes up for us today. And card off the top, let's take a look at this. Ooh. The Four of Pentacles. And with working with this card, I think today we're gonna touch on, on an uncomfortable topic, money. And as readers, it is something that we will come in contact with a lot and just need to be aware of and kind of how to navigate it. And understanding that everyone is different with how they feel about money and how they interact with money, not only in their personal life, but in their professional one. When I started reading and doing holistic services um, for money and as part of you know, my life's purpose and all that wonderful stuff, it became very uncomfortable. And one of the biggest and hardest lessons for me to learn early on was get comfortable with being uncomfortable with money. If you are uncomfortable with money, you'll get used to being uncomfortable and you'll navigate it just fine. And so that was something that I had to deal with early on and it really changed how I was viewing um, money and being able to interact with people. Another thing is the self-worth behind it. As a reader, when do you start charging? And a lot of it is knowing your craft, knowing yourself and knowing what you're worth and being able to charge for it. like. If you just started yesterday, maybe wait a hot minute. <laughs> but if you're comfortable and you know what you're doing, absolutely. Because what they're also paying for is not just the reading, they're paying for your time and talent. And that is worth something and that should be honored and respected and validated within yourself and from other people as you give a reading. And so it was, it can be difficult for a lot of people. Like on this card, the guy's face is not happy. The guy's face is not like, woo, let's start rocking the cash. He is absolutely like, ugh, just ugh, ugh. And that's okay. It's okay to start there. It's okay to be there. It's okay to be uncomfortable around money and asking for money. And everyone has a different style about asking for money with a reading or with services and a lot of people will um, request the money up front and then give the reading and that's a really safe way to do it while at the same time um, I sometimes ask for the money at the end if I want them to like schedule and pay for another session right away then they'll just pay for both at once um, and so it's finding your style and no matter what anyone says around you honoring your own style and your own comfort level if you're more comfortable asking for the money right away, do it. If you're more comfortable using Venmo over PayPal, do it. Make sure that you're comfortable with your money because it is your money and it is your interaction with people as a reader. And so it's important to remember those things and to honor yourself on this aspect of being a reader, which is a very real part of it. It's something that if you do this professionally at events or conferences or house parties, or you give one-on-one -on -one readings out of your home or out of a wellness center, anything, money will happen. It's inevitable and it's inevitable that you have to find the way that you are comfortable with it. And I started when I was very young. So I started training at 10 and um, to be in holistic medicine. And then by the age of 15, I had started seeing clients, which 
is amazing and wonderful, but a 15 year old does not know anything about money on their best day. And so when I started charging, I was charging like $50 for an hour of intensive spiritual work. And I had to have a uh, older practitioner talk to me about it and say, you're really not charging what you're worth and you're also undercutting everyone else. Because in my 15 year old mind that was not comfortable with money and not used to being around money was like, $50, yeah! And it was also, um, I was charging because I wanted anyone who wanted a session to be able to have it accessible to them. And that's a them thing, not a me thing. If someone wants a session, if someone wants to come see you, they'll find the money, they'll have the money, they'll save. If it's a priority, it can, it can happen. And it was, I was told, you know, I'm not charging what I'm worth, but it's also kind of ridiculous to charge so much less than other people doing the exact same thing as me. And I realized that that was very true. And people didn't take me seriously because I charged so little. And it showed that I didn't have confidence in myself and what I was doing. Whether that's what I meant for it to say or not, that's how it was coming across. And so with money and readings and doing this professionally, it's about figuring out what works for you and also charging around the same amount as what everyone else does, you know, in your area, in your, in your field. You don't charge super low. And I remember going, um, after I had been doing this for several years, I was teaching a class up in Northeast Minneapolis and this guy came to my class and he bragged to everyone in the class as part of his intro, you know, you go around, you say your name and what's up, this is why I'm here. And he bragged that he was so much cheaper than any other practitioner, including me in the Twin Cities. And my first thought wasn't, oh my God, what a deal. That is so nice. It's accessible to everyone. My first thought was, what a douche. I was like, you're undercutting everyone else. You're really not taking it seriously. Please don't say that. Um, and it was understanding that, wow, that's how people used to see me. Good to know. It's good to have that realization about um, your worth and how much you should charge. And with that, it's a lot about um, how you view yourself and how that's coming across to uh, people you're giving readings to and clients and colleagues and uh, being able to really embrace yourself in that way. So another thing that I wanna talk about, I, I realized that I was talking fast and so now I'm slowing it down, um, is there are a few situations where people have charged a lot of money and I call it high king shit. And it's basically like, you are the best in what you do. I have a colleague who charges $150 for 30 minutes. She is a psychic astrologer. And she I've, I've seen her. She's worth every penny. But she is high king shit at what she does. There is a shaman in uh, Wisconsin that I've never seen, but friends have. And he is $250 for an hour. But his treatment is indigenous and one of a kind and you see him once and you make great shifts in your soul and so it's like oh yeah that that makes sense for them so find out what makes sense for you there are a lot of like reiki practitioners who all charge 75 dollars for an hour and that's great for them and they're staying with the market and everything so you got to figure out what's right for you and also stick with the trends of where where you're at and what you're doing um, another wonderful uh, example I have is there was a drag queen astrologer and she was fabulous and it was I was uh, asking about different services and stuff and I said oh I don't have like a card on me is cash okay and she said oh baby cash is king and that really stuck with me as I do readings at conventions and conferences and stuff like that. It's like, you don't have to have a credit card. Cash is king. Cash cash in hand is, is all okay. Um, so yeah, this, the Four of Pentacles, I, I wanted to talk about money. I wanted to talk about, as a reader, it is something that you will encounter 
unless you're doing it as a hobby for your friends and you never charge, which if that's true, rock it out, do do what's best for you. But if you do it with money, it's it that's what this card reminded me of that it is something that needs to be talked about and there are so many things that you should be aware of as as you're just starting out that, you know, me as a silly 15 year old, I so wish I would have known and done things differently and not undercharged for so many years. But now as an adult, it's like, oh yeah, this is what I charge. And I, I own that I am a great practitioner and therefore I am not uncomfortable saying, give me my money, you got a session. And understanding that if someone didn't like their session, Remember, they still paid for your time and talent, and that's worth something, so they still pay. And so when people get upset, it's gently reminding them that they didn't pay for the outcome if it's not what they wanted, because a lot of people ask questions that they don't get the answer that they want, let's be honest, but they still paid for your time and talent, and that is absolutely worth something. And it's, you deserve it, you deserve the money, you deserve, uh, the respect and so own your four of pentacles own that you deserve money and that it might be uncomfortable and awkward know that what you're doing is you know right for you what you're charging how you're charging how you're asking for your money find your style when it comes to pentacles find your style when it comes to your money and you will be so much more comfortable and flow with ease and so that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, one final thing was when I, um, several years ago when I was in my 20s, I did sales and deals and discounts and everything all the time. And what I realized was I was undervaluing myself, but also, again, people aren't taking you seriously. But then I would have clients come in who were bartering and they're like, well, this deal was last week, so that's all I'm gonna charge this week. It's like, no, give, give me my, give me the amount that I that I say it is, and um, that can get very uncomfortable to barter and do that kind of stuff with clients. It's just not not something that you really want to do, and um, set yourself up for. So set yourself up for success in talking to your clients about money. If you have to write out a script or look up examples online, talk to your friends. Talk to your friends who have no problem with, with asking for money and talking about it. They will be a wealth of information. So again, find your style with money, rock your four of pentacles, and know that your time and talent is worth something. I hope this was informative and fun, and thank you so much for tuning in. I am Lily McNamara, this is Tarot Off the Cuff, and we used the pocket size Universal Rider Weight Classic Deck. Remember, you can like below, you can comment, you can share your thoughts, subscribe to the page. Feel free to share this link on Facebook and other social media because it's valuable for all readers to connect with each other and for all of us to have a beautiful community. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. I will talk to you next time. Hi, thanks for watching. This is Kevin Quigley with Tarot Off The Cuff. If you can take a second, click the subscribe button down below. That'll let you know when a new video is posted and you might want to go over and watch it. If you hit the thumbs up for the videos that you really like, that will help spread the word so new people will find Tarot Off The Cuff in their feed and that helps the channel grow. That would be great. And if uh, you got a question or a comment, positive or negative, whether you agree or disagree, or if you want to add information uh, or your own take on a particular part or a particular topic, put a comment down below. We would love to hear from you. Thanks so much.